Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shaylee Stewart here with your cattle market news tip sheet brought to you in part by DTN. Here to do what we always do and get you caught up in the cattle market, we have a lot to talk about today. We have a lot to sink our teeth into to really dive into the, the meat and potatoes of this market report. We're going to highlight the weather and how it's different from the north and the south and drastically different right now. We're going to talk about the fat cattle market, what it's doing this week, what it did last week, and we're going to talk about the superior sale that's going to start tomorrow. And then obviously we hope that that good news and the, the excitement that we're expecting expecting in that sale trickles into next week in a northern sale. So nevertheless, let's start at the top of the report with, with some prayers. We need some much needed prayers. Um, in southern Montana, I'm sure that some of you have seen because it's been highlighted around Yellowstone, but uh, in southern Montana, they are flooding like never before. Absolutely catastrophic losses, catastrophic damage to individuals' property, to towns, to individuals' ranches. There's places in Red Lodge specifically, you know, and then now it's spread down into Billings even red lodge the the little town the the main street of town absolutely looks like a gravel bed a riverbed and i'm talking main street red lodge montana i pray that you're with those i pray that you pray with those communities that you pray for those individuals that you pray for themselves as people that you pray for their livestock that you pray for them financially because given how expensive everything is right now it's going to be really hard to repair the foundations of the homes to build back corrals that have been washed away to rebuild fences and uh most people won't have options just simply because they have to do it because they're they're their homes that were destroyed and uh so nevertheless i just pray that you're with those communities in thoughts and in prayer and in love and if you can help in any way there's some pages to do that as well and then adversely if we talk about what happened in kansas and texas over the weekend there were thousands and i do mean thousands of cattle that died this past weekend fat cattle that died this past weekend because in parts in texas in parts in kansas there was absolutely high 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 humidity and no wind which basically means that they'll suffocate to death and so you know that's unfortunate that's too bad to hear we don't like to hear about animal suffering but adversely that's going to play effect on these markets and so let's dive in let's get you caught up and starting at the top of the report as we always do with your friday to friday livestock contract changes so last week june live cattle throughout the week gained two dollars and sixty cents august live cattle gained two dollars and thirty five cents august feeder cattle gained sixty cents and september feeder cattle fell twenty five cents july corn gained forty six cents throughout the week and september corn gained thirty two cents throughout the week let's jump right on into that fat cattle trade because last week was a powerhouse and I'm excited to tell you that feedlots sunk their feet into the ground and said you know what we're smart people too we get this market we understand that you need cattle packers and that we have the cattle that our show lists are green and that you need to come a running if you want them and so you know what go ahead and flop another buck or two down per hundred weight for these cattle and that's exactly what ended up playing out in the southern plains last week live cattle traded anywhere from a buck 36 to a buck 37 and that was one to two dollars higher mostly two dollars higher by the weekend and get this early in the week you know cattle were selling for a dollar higher but packers by the end of the week started doing their tallies started realizing that they were still short bought and by Friday prices had to jump another dollar another dollar to equate to being two dollars higher than the previous week and that is never hardly seen in the cat, cat, fat cattle market so I'm just here to tell you that packers are short bought feedlots take advantage take opportunity of this and the leverage that you're gaining in the market right now and really take advantage for all that it is if you can get a dollar or two push for three to four dollars higher because you know what they'll never they'll they will never give you what you don't ask for they'll give you a dollar if you ask for a dollar but you know what if there is an opportunity to gain four dollars and you miss out on that extra three bucks just simply because you were too afraid to ask for it that's that's money left on the table don't be afraid to ask for it they'll tell you no they'll never they'll never give you more just because of the kindness of their hearts so like i said in the southern plains last week live cattle traded for a buck 36 to a buck 37 that was considered basically two dollars higher and the northern plains dress cattle traded for 225 to 226 and that was three to four dollars higher and listen to this this reaffirms the point that packers are indeed short bought last week's cash cattle movement totaled 88,218 head. Of that, 82% of the cattle were committed for the nearby delivery. 82%, while the remaining 18% were committed for the deferred delivery. 82% were committed for the nearby delivery. That means that packers need the cattle. They're not pushing them to the deferred delivery. They're not saying, you know, we just want to pad our inventory. We don't want to have to chase this market later in the weeks ahead. So you know what? We're just, we're going to take all the cattle in the nearby delivery because we need them now. And so pay attention to that. And hope, thankfully, it's already Tuesday afternoon. Thankfully, as we look to the market tomorrow, Wednesday, 
I'm expecting that feedlots are going to see significantly higher prices again this week just simply because of how short packers are bought. And we have to realize that the 4th of July is in merely three weeks, so they need to have as much inventory as they can get on hand. So you feel lots, take advantage of the market when it favors your position because it doesn't come around very often. And so when it does, you need to capitalize on it. Last week's estimated slaughter came in at 674,000 head. That was uncomparable to the week before because it was a holiday week, but 4,000 head more than the same week a year ago. Last week, box beef trends were supportive as well. Uh, choice cuts averaged 271.03, up $3.82 from the previous week, and select cuts averaged 249.71, up 41 cents from the previous week. And the week's total movement of cuts, grains, and trim a totaled 546 loads. Let's talk about these carcass weights because you know what? I'm, I'm spending so much time talking about the fat cattle market right now. We started off the report by saying that we had significant death loss over the weekend because of high humidity and no wind. Thousands of cattle removed from the show list. That bodes well for the fat cattle market, for, for feedlots position. I'm about to tell you that carcass weights are, are uh, dwindling and that they're getting smaller just because, you know what, cattle don't gain well through the summer. That bodes well for feedlots. I just told you that box beef prices were trending higher. That bodes well for feedlots. Take advantage of this market. It's stronger than what you believe. All you have to do is put the gas, put the pedal to the metal, push the gas higher. For the week ending May 28th, 2022, Sears averaged 882 pounds. That was down six pounds from the previous week and down two pounds from a year ago. Heifers averaged 819 pounds, down two pounds from a week ago and up two pounds from a year ago. Let's talk about your fresh beef imports. Uh, last week, fresh beef imports totaled 20,941 metric tons, with Canada, Mexico, and New Zealand being your biggest importers. Beef exports last week totaled 17,700 metric tons, with Japan, China, and South Korea being your biggest buyers. Shifting gears now, it's going to be an exciting week. You know, I know that the board's trading lower this week. The live cattle market closed higher on Tuesday, but there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of doggish attitude in the market right now. Obviously, we know that our economy is in a is in a compromised position. We know that interest rates are expected to go higher. Inflation is running with un in an unbridled manner, and uh, there's just a lot of pressure on the market. But what I will tell you is that live cattle closed higher on Tuesday. Tuesday, and that as we look at this marketplace, buyers have to kind of weigh the pros and cons and say, you know what, I understand that, that equities and commodities are trending lower, but I also understand the long-term trajectory of the live cattle market. And given how few feeder cattle and calves there's going to be to, put, to restock feedlots with this year, they better get aggressive. And so I am so excited for Superior's Corn Belt Classic tomorrow and Thursday. They're uh, expecting 66,500 head to trade in, in southern Sioux City, Nebraska. And so I'm going to be watching that report. I'm going to be talking to you about it and just really excited. And then I expect that energy, that momentum to carry into Northern's early summer special next week where they're expecting right around 13,000 head of cattle to trade. So you know what, guys? Sink your teeth into this market and really pay attention because there's so many volatile, not volatile, but dynamic factors. And yeah, volatile factors right now. We still have a war in Ukraine going on. We have inflation. We have a weakening economy. We have fuel that's astronomically high. So yeah, there's a lot of volatile pieces, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a place in this market to gain to gain dollars. You know what? Obviously, feedlots have an opportunity right now, but you know what? Uh, Cow-calf producers, you're going to have an opportunity too. So really just continue to be a, dis a disciplined uh, viewer of this market and a, view and a participant of this market and really pay attention because there's so many things going on right now that you can capitalize on and that you can position your ranch, your operation, your cattle, which are uh, your assets to, to perform and thrive on for you. So let's try to, let's just get you familiarized with with what feeder cattle traded for last week. We're just going to break it down for region, and uh, I'm excited to report the Superior's prices next week and the following week, Northern's prices. So this is last week's prices in North Central region, which is Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, North and South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Your six to 700 pound steers traded for $1.87. That was about $4 softer than the previous week. Your seven to 800 pound steers traded for $1.70. That was $5 cheaper than the previous week. And your eight to 900 pound steers traded for $1.67, and that was $1.00. 
$1 stronger than the previous week. In your South Central region, that is New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Your five to 600 pound steers traded for a buck 89. That was $6 stronger than the previous week. Your six to 700 pound steers traded for a buck 72. That was $2 stronger than the previous week. And your 700 to 800 pound steers traded for a dollar 60. That was $4 stronger than the previous week. And in your Southeastern region, that is Arkansas, Louisiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and North and South Carolina. Your four to 500 pound steers traded for a dollar 79. That was $4 stronger than the previous week. Your five to 600 pound steers traded for a buck 70. That was uh, $4 higher than the previous week. And your six to 700 pound, ste pound steers traded for a dollar 58. That was $4 stronger than the previous week. So like I said, we have a lot of, a lot of dynamic and evolving pieces in the marketplace right now. And uh, that's not to say that there's not good and there's not hope and there's not dollars to be had. Stay engaged in these markets, pay attention, listen to as many market reports as you can, because the more you can sink your teeth into, the more you're going to learn. Pay attention, folks. We have good things to come in. Shaylee Stewart here with your Cattle Market News Tip Sheet, brought to you in part by DTN.